Those of you who have your Bibles, please turn with me to Isaiah 43 and 19. Isaiah 43 and 19. When you have it, say amen. All right. <laughs> and if you don't, say hold on. Hold on. All right. We yet holding on. I'm reading from the Full Life Study Bible, King James Version. And this is how my Bible reads. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. Amen. This past weekend uh, at Damon College, we planned and organized a bus trip, uh, a bus trip of about 35, 37 students from New York City uh, to come to visit Damon campus for open house. And for many of those students, it was the first time they traveled outside of New York City, be it Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Bronx. And we did some planning. We planned for them to watch movies while they had their seven hour journey on the bus. We plan to stop at strategic locations throughout New York City and Buffalo for them to eat and rest. We planned social interactions with our current students while they were on campus. We planned for dinners while they were on campus. We even planned a game night for them to have games and again, at, re, interact socially with our, our students. I even took my boys on campus. I said, let's have the boys come on campus where they could interact with some of the students from New York City. We plan to have a panel of students, current students from New York City, Rochester, Buffalo, to give them an idea of what it was like from a student perspective to be on our campus. What I didn't plan for was the experience I had or the encounter I had with Gabriel. As the day was ending up, I sat down with a student who sat beside me, uh, the 17-year-old young man, and uh, he introduced himself very politely, shook my hand. Uh, he said that I, I sent in my application, Mr. Williams, and I did my FAFSA, and I applied independent. I looked at him and I said, well, why did you apply independent? He replied, well, because I'm an orphan. At that point, something switched. The Mr. Williams retention, dean of admissions hat went off, and Reverend Williams stepped into the room. So I felt like at this point, it was something else that we had to talk about. It was beyond the recruitment process. This was not another EFC. This was not another you know, student that we were going to recruit. So I, I asked him, I said, well, um, if you don't mind me asking, you know, well, who are you living with now? He said, well, when I was 10 years old, my mother passed away. And since I've been 10, I've gone through a lot of counseling and things to get over the situation. He said, I didn't like to talk a lot, so the counselors had me write. And so I wrote out what I felt. That made me a strong uh, believer in and developed my understanding of literature. And because of that is why I have a 1100 SAT score and that I have a 90 high school average. And we went on to talk and he had uh, this look in his eyes and I said, well, well um, what's your plan now? Is Damon a school you really want to be at or is this a school you're settling for? He said, well, since I've been here, I've talked to students, I've talked to you, I've talked to different faculty members. I like it here. I want to be here. This is where I want to be. And I told him, I said, you know, if you want to be here, I'm going to do everything in my power to make it happen. I said, we're going to start right now with the deposit. Can you pay the deposit? He said, well, I'm working. I have a few weeks. I'll, I'll send it in. I said, I tell you what, don't worry about a $200 deposit. We're going to go ahead and lower that. Just send in $20, $10 for room and board, $10 for your uh, academics. He said, okay, I, I can do that. I can do that. And then I told him, how was your financial aid pack? He said, well, it's still a loan of about five or $6,000 that is outstanding. So I said, I tell you what, we're going to talk to financial aid. We're going to see what we can do about that. 
Near the end of the conversation, with tears in his eyes, he, he looked at me and he just said, thank you. And, and that thank you went so far. And I looked at him and I told him what I'm going to tell you. And that was, as the text says, prepare for your exit. Amen? At some point, we have to prepare for our exit. It's not always just going to happen without some preparation. We have to prepare ourselves for that exit. Again, the text reads, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, in rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43 speaks about God's love for Israel, God's special people. He redeemed Israel and called them by name because they belong to him, amen? amen. We too are like Israel and are protected and we belong to God. He will make a way out of the wilderness. His record, or should I say his word, speaks for itself. This text reflects a, a new exodus for a people once again oppressed as the Israelites had been as enslaved in Egypt before they came out. A new exodus would take place in a new desert, amen? What God has done in the past was nothing compared to what he's going to do today. God will do a new thing today. God will do a new thing tomorrow. He even told us right before verse 19 and 18, he wanted us to remember those things. He told you, remember those things. Now forget them. Remember what I did for you when you were 10, Gabriel? Remember what I did when you were 20, Brother Curtis? At 35, remember when you went through that situation, Brother Tony? You remember that? Y'all remember what God did? He said, remember what I did. Now forget it. Amen. Because now I have a new thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If God will do a new thing in the wilderness, if God would do a new thing in the desert, don't you think he can do something right here in Buffalo, New York? Amen. In the third poorest city in the country, with the highest rate of unemployment for African-American males, I think we can agree that there is some work to be done. Well, well, let's see. The President of the United States came, and then he left. And then the President of the United States came back again, and he left. With no acknowledgement of the problems or the issues that we face, right around the corner on Clinton, right around the corner on William, yeah. Bailey, Delavan, with no acknowledgement of those issues that we face here in Buffalo. Our mayor, our mayor Byron Brown, he's in his second term now, and Buffalo is still in the wilderness. But redeeming fire, how can we expect or ask a man to do something that only God can do, amen? Right. We're asking the wrong one. I don't know about you, but I have to tell myself, and I've learned that I can't just ask anybody. I can't just call on my mama. I can't just call on my daddy. I can't call on President Obama. I can't even call on Mayor Brown. And Governor Como ain't gonna listen. But if there's a name that I can call, I don't know if you know him, there's a name that I can call. His name is Jesus, amen? I can call him when I need my bills paid. I can call him when my back is against a wall. I can call him when I'm in need of a healing in this body. I can call, I can call him when I'm lonely and there's no one else to talk to. I can call him when I need a breakthrough. I can call on his name, Jesus. I can call, can you call him tonight? I'm telling you right now, he will listen. He will answer, he will pick up the phone. You have to call him, amen? Every time I turn around, every time I turn around, he keeps on. It doesn't matter if I turn to the left, if I turn to the right, he keeps on blessing me. Amen. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, prepare for your exit. Prepare for your exit. Prepare for your exit. Redeeming fire, God is in the middle of something, amen? amen? I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know how God is going to do it. Uh -huh. I don't even know when God is going to do it. But God is in the middle of doing something right here in redeeming fire. Amen. His word tells us, behold. He's saying, stop, look up, listen, behold. He wants your attention. I will do a new thing. What's my point? Well, we've been here for five years. And God is going to, as his word says, spring forth and do a new thing. He's not just going to allow it to flow in. He's going to spring forth and do a new thing. Are you ready for this new thing, Redeeming Fire? I don't believe you. Are you ready for this new thing, Redeeming Fire? You want God to change something. Are you ready for this new thing, Redeeming Fire? I don't know if y'all are ready. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not convinced y'all are ready. Now, now watch, watch this. Watch this. Everybody ain't going. Some of them, you know, not, not you, not you. Some of them may not be able to go or receive this new thing. Some of you, I mean, some of them. Aren't going to be able to go with us in this process of preparing, in this exodus. But as we are ready, as we are preparing, even those of us that are going have to change our condition. Amen? Amen. There's some things that we can't take with us. There's some habits that we can't take with us. There's some people that we can't take with us. We have to change our condition. So what are you saying, Reverend? Well, let me tell you, if I believe, which I do, that the Lord is going to do a new thing in redeeming fire, I have to then believe that he's going to do a new thing in the lives of his people. Me, you, the person next to you, he's going to do a new thing in the lives of the people that are around you. If ministry is going to happen, God is going to birth something new in you. Well, I've been saved 5, 10, 15, 20. I've been saved longer than you've been so-called preaching, Minister William. What are you going to do new in me? All right. Just watch him. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah. If he's going to do it in redeeming fire and you're going with us and you have to prepare yourself and change your condition, he's going to do a new thing in you as well. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, this church is brick and mortar. The real church is in you. So if he's going to turn around this church and do something new in this church, he's not talking about this building. He's talking about you and I. He's going to do a new thing here. He's going to spring forth something new in us. Amen? God has placed you under a preaching, teaching, studying pastor. Amen? God has worked some things out of your life already. He has changed some of our finances. He has changed some of our environments. He has brought some things out of us. You're not in the same place you were five years ago. And if you are, you shouldn't be. Amen. You are pregnant and about to give birth to something God has placed inside of you, and you don't even know it. Let me say that again. You are pregnant with something that God has put inside of you, and you don't even know it. This is not an a and &E show when you have the, 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 the young lady say, I was nine months pregnant and didn't know it, and all of a sudden the baby comes out. No, 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 no. This ain't that type of program. God has put some things in you that's been there that have been sitting dormant, but what I'm trying to tell you is that what you need is already in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's already in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. But he's going to birth it out. What, what's that going to do for you when he births it out? It could mean that the 
tithe goes up because now you understand the meaning of tithing. All right. Not y'all, but them. Not y'all. Uh-huh. Not y'all. Amen. So this, this, this birthing could increase your salary, but it can also mean that you uh, take a closer look at the money that you have that God has already given you. Amen. So it's not always an increase. Let's be honest. How many of you can think about at least $50 that you spent in the last two weeks on something you truly didn't need? Can we be honest? Okay, all them hands didn't go up. Let me help you out. How many of you all then went out to dinner two or three times but you could have just went once? Uh-huh. uh-huh. How many of you all have bought a pack of cigarettes or some of y'all carton of cigarettes? Well, I'm going to go down to the Indian reservation because they're a little cheaper down near. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Shopping sprees, alcohol. Uh-huh. We, we all have at least $50 that we don't spend in the last two weeks on something that we really didn't need. Now, I'm not saying that we don't deserve or should spend money on things we uh, would like to have or the luxuries of life. That's okay. But if you're taken from God to do it, uh-huh. hmm. All right. Amen. hmm. Amen. If the congregation is going to grow, God has to do a new thing in you. God will place a spirit of evangelism in you. He will make sure that the blessings that he put in you, the blessings that he delivered you from, you just got to tell it. You got to go up to the mountaintops and just tell it. I've got to tell you about what God has done for me. I'm going to show you what God has done for me. You just can't keep it to yourself. The testimony that you have about your healing you have to go and tell it. Amen. The testimony that you have about the places you don't go no more, yeah. you have to tell it. The things you now can do because of your finances, you have to tell it. Yeah. The thing that God has done in your marriage, yeah. you have to tell it. Yeah. You can't keep it to yourself. And when you ask, uh, Brother Curtis, how did you do it? You have to say, the Lord keeps on blessing me. And then you have to say, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my God. And when you ask you again, you say, nothing but the blood of Jesus. You have to let that person know that I have a testimony. There's places that I don't go anymore. Not sometimes because I don't want to go. Because sometimes we want to go, but the God has done enough in us that it's not in us anymore. You know, get to the point that you can see the next person beside you sipping on that henny and you don't even want none. I'm just saying. But he took it out of me. I mean, he took it out of y'all. Amen. I have a testimony and I have to say, I have to tell it. You have a testimony. You have to tell it. Because if not, these people are saying they're going to church Sunday after Sunday. I don't know what's going on, but ain't nothing changed. We have to let them know that the Lord is blessing us and we have a testimony. You have to get busy getting ready. You have to get busy getting ready for your exit. God can't send you and you can't come out of this wilderness if you aren't busy getting ready. You have to go to class on Tuesday. Amen. You have to go to class on Tuesday. Is this thing on? We have to come to Bible study on Wednesday. We have to get in his word. So if you're not in class and you're not in Bible study, how are you growing? How are we going to grow the church? How is God going to bless you? How is he going to change your condition? God has to give us the tools. And like I said, it's already in you. And, And the word tells us that he's doing a new thing. And with a new thing, you need some new tools. You know, when I, when I got to this point and I started thinking about that word and the, the tools that we need for the new thing that God has, I thought about, oh, back when my wife and I were uh, engaged and I got my, my apartment and she was living somewhere else. I'm going to keep it holy. And my, my wife bought me a entertainment center. And when I got this entertainment center, I said, I'm going to put this together. I had a Phillips head screwdriver, I had a straight screwdriver, I had a hammer, I had nails, all for this entertainment center. And I needed all of those tools to put this entertainment center together. And it took me all weekend, but I put it together. It always had a little lean to it, but I put it together, you know. And, and just recently we got another entertainment center. And I'm thinking, okay, here we go. I got to put this thing together again. It's going to be an all weekend event. And I went to see what tools I needed. In this new thing, I needed one Allen wrench. That one Allen wrench 
put the glass on, put the wood on the sides, it put the TV stand on the back. It was one Allen wrench. So what I'm trying to illustrate with that story is that some things that we had to struggle with before and we had to fight with before and we had to get rid of, it was all on us. But God is doing a new thing. The struggle isn't there anymore because you're not by yourself. You've come to this altar and you said, Lord, take me, clean me. Make me a better, come into my heart, Father God. And when he would do that, you're not doing it alone. You have some new tools. Yeah. And the new tools makes the job easier. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? It makes the job easier. But the difference between us and God as we're changing our condition and preparing for our exit, he hasn't given up on us. He can close the door, but he didn't change the locks. Amen? He hasn't told you no he said not yet what God is going to do in you some of us aren't ready for that's why it hasn't happened yet but God is going to do some things I'm not where I used to be but I'm in a whole lot better place amen somebody knows I messed up on my job but for his mercy. Yeah. I received a new job without the qualifications I needed. Right. His grace. Right. I have to tell myself over and over again, I am somebody. Yeah. Mercy. But look at me now, his grace. Yeah. You don't know, like I know, yeah. what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. You don't know, like I know, yeah. what the Lord has done for me. We have to shout it from the rooftops. Yeah. What has God done for you? If he's done enough for you, this would be the point of this sermon. Y'all should be on y'all feet. Let me say it again. You don't know like I know. (laughs) You don't know like I know, my God, what the Lord has done for me. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me (laughs) if you knew (laughs) what I knew my God my God he's a doctor he's a lawyer he heals me if I can tell you I just can't tell it all my God my God we almost done we almost done I need to tell somebody Jesus If I can't say nothing else, Jesus, it was for his grace. Jesus, it was for his mercy. Jesus, it was for his delivering power. Jesus, a soul regulator. Jesus, a mind regulator. Jesus, oh God, will you do it one more time? Jesus, 